Warning, this video is about rocks. And if you don't like it, then get. All right, I was just out here walking good old Sir Remington in the woods. And we're walking along the creek that's in, goes through the woods. And I wanted to show you guys the rock formations in the creek. Remy, come. No, no, leave it. The rock formations in the creek where the cleave lines of the rock have formed. And look, it's like almost equal, right? Like there's, you know, it almost looks like somebody scored these rocks, right? These are just the rocks in the um, floor of the, running along the bottom of the creek at my house. Remy, come on, come this way. So, um, and this happens all along the creek where the rock is exposed, right? Because, and I've seen, Remy, come on, bud. Come on, it's slippery, let's go. And I've seen the, the banks of this creek change just in the short amount of time that I've been the one living on this property. And I've been living here since 2011. And I could even go through and walk through and show you where I've seen the most erosion. And I've seen it change quite a bit, actually. Um, I've lost a couple trees. I had a giant beechwood tree that fell over that was um, growing right on the bank of the creek and uh, it finally fell over. Um, but I'm gonna go through and show you um, all the areas where I see this most prevalently on my creek. All right. So there, it's a straight line here. Remy, come on. Damn. Here's another straight line in the rock. And as you go down, you'll see these, um, what they look like you know, straight carved lines in the rock, but I believe that is just a cleave point in the formation of this rock. And just over time, the creek, the water running, hot, cold, hot, cold, I believe that those cleave lines become more apparent over time after the rock forms. And a little further down, you see more cracks in the rock that are very straight. Like right there, two right angles, inverted right angles. <laughs> Actually, three, one, one right angle, two right angle, three right angle, four. Right there next to each other. Come on, Rem. Woo, slippery. Watch it. As we go down more cracks in the rock, like along the whole the whole creek, right? So here more it even carries over from that side to this side of that dip there. You know, this line right here. Okay. Cross over here. So, and so, another one. <clears throat> And this is all crystalline rock. Like it looks all yucky and stuff from the top, but if you get close here, you can see. This is 
probably mostly quartz and more here and as we go through hopefully this log is not so rotten I can't walk on it there we go Woo. and then more going in both directions right this is all just how the rock formed. I mean, look at right here, all these steps, these natural steps that have been made in the rock, right? All right here. Like sheets, you know, like square sheets of rock layered on top of each other. All right, so this is um, a rock a big rock formation in the creek and you know it just kind of looks like blah rock gray rock but up close you can see that these are quartz it's quartz it's like basically a big thing of smoky quartz um, all of this, if you look at it up close, is quartz material that's showing through, right? Okay, so then if I stand back on it, you can see these lines here, right here, that, you know, those, it's showing you that it's highly organized structure and it's cracking along some of those bond lines, those cleave points right here. Another. And this is all quartz. Right there. Now that I think about it, I wonder if it's possible for me to get my quartz bathtub out of one of these rocks. <laughs> uh, one can dream. <clears throat> and they're even under the water. If you can see through the reflection, you can see right there. The lines continue in the rocks under the water. And I even noticed in this photo that my friend posted on Facebook of the mountain off of her balcony. Cheers, Andrea. Um, I'm going to zoom in on this mountain and you can see where the lines um, of formation or the or the the cleave points. I don't I don't really know how else to describe it, but they run through the entire shape of the mountain from top to bottom. So I'll point it out from here. You can see it, um, the top going to the bottom. And then if you even look closely, you know, you can see those, that triangular shape, that tetrahedral shape expressing itself in the lines of the mountain. And I'll put some red lines over to show you where you can kind of see that repeating triangle shape in the mountain. It's the sacred geometry peeking out. And just like when we look under a microscope at this piece of tourmaline, there's parts of it that are very clean and very smooth, you know, 
unblemished or as close to being unblemished as possible, right? And then if you look at the rough parts, though, you can still see, you can still see the basic lines, and the shape that the bonds take in the rough part that continue from the organized, the, the cleaner part. And they grow in different shapes. So this is a different mineral, but here it is growing in a, in a bulbous form. Also known technically as botryoidal, botryoidal, B-O-T-R-Y-O-I-D-L. It's when minerals grow in like, the, uh, the form of like a bunch of grapes. And there are a number of crystals or minerals that grow in the botryoidal form. If you just search up botryoidal crystal, um, there's a number of them that do it. It's really, so like when you see these different like mystery round rocks or whatever out in nature, people are like, where'd this come from? What is it? You know, once you start to see that this is a normal crystal habit, a form for many crystals to grow in. Some of these things just become not so mysterious anymore. Like, for instance, when you see these these tabletop mountains, right? Uh, I search up tabletop mountain where they grow straight up and they have a flat top, right? Here's another one, tabletop mountain. Um, and they're all over the place, different continents have have these tabletop mountains right this one this is venezuela you see they have them in africa america probably you could consider like i don't know monument valley um having sort of similar similar looks to their to their um, formations, right? So here's one growing, or, or well, growing, shouldn't say growing, but here's one that's, you know, it looks like a, a, like almost like a tree stump, right? Coming out of the ground. But crystals grow this way. And I'm not saying that none of these are trees or none of them could possibly be that. I'm just saying that there's another alternative to what that could explain how these things form. So if you look at tourmaline in the matrix, you know, it grows this way. It grows straight up and then it self terminates at the top. Um, sometimes like this one will have like a very subtle point on it. Tourmaline doesn't really um, have those sharp points, like obvious points, like quartz crystal will have, um, but it does naturally self-terminate in a flat top. Like right here, these two pieces, they have terminated in a flat top. And, you know, there's a number of other crystals that grow in the same habit. Um, maybe it doesn't terminate in a complete flat top like some of them do, but it does quite, quite often. Um, and so when you look at these, it's just... Just take into consideration that there could be another explanation. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, that this was a tree, right? It could be that this formation, this is just how this particular mountain grew. This, is, this was the crystal habit that was the dominant crystal habit in the, min in the minerals, that are involved in forming these tabletop mountains, right? Just something to consider. Thank you so much for watching my musings on rocks and mountains and constructive comments that add to the conversation are always welcome. Cheers. Cheers.